Now let's look at computing DC gain of a system. The transfer function of the system is defined by the output divided by input in the Laplace domain. So y of s divided by u of s which is equal to g of s. This is the transfer function. Now you can write y of s is u of s times g of s. Now if the input is a step or u of t is a step then u of s is 1 divided by s. So for step input I can write y of s is g of s by divided by s. I just taken u of s and substituted with 1 divided by s for step input. Now dc gain by definition is given by limit as t tends to 0 of y of t from the final value theorem we can write this is equal to limit as s tends to 0 of s y of s which is limit as s tends to 0 s times g of s divided by s which is limit as s tends to 0 of g of s. Now, this is assuming that g of s is stable that is all the poles of g of s are in the left half plane left half of the complex plane that is all the poles of g of s have negative real parts now let's look at an example so g1 of s is s plus 3 divided by s plus 2 divided by times s plus 3 now if you look at the poles one pole is at minus 2 one pole is at minus 3 so both poles are in the left half plane they have re negative real parts so you can do the final value theorem of find the dc gain which happens to be 1 divided by 2 so limit as s tends to 0 now if you look at this function now here if you factorize this this ends up being s divided by s minus 3 times s plus 1 now this pole is at s equal to minus 1 that is stable this pole is s equal to minus s equal to 3 which is in the right half plane which has which means this pole has a positive real part which means this is unstable therefore you cannot take uh, the dc gain dc gain doesn't make sense for this system it is unstable time constant the time constant is usually defined for a first order system with no zeros it is defined as the time taken for the output to reach 63 percent of the final value for a step input so the first order system with no zeros is generically written as g of s equal to c divided by s plus a so c is some constant a is the location of the pole you can rewrite this as c divided by a time divided by s divided by a plus 1 1 divided by a is the time constant so that's the time constant and the dc gain is given by c divided by a now we'll look at second order systems uh, second order systems are a little bit more complicated than first order system and we'll have to look at various situations depending on something called damping for second order systems now second order system without zeros it's a canonical second order system that you're going to look at the transfer function is given by g of s is kdc times omega n squared divided by s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared so this here is the characteristic equation so the dc gain is obviously kdc dc gain is limit of g of s as s tends to 0 so as tends to 0 this becomes 0 this thing becomes g0 omega n squared cancels with this omega n squared what is left is kdc so kdc is the dc gain damping is zeta the natural frequency is omega n the characteristic equation is the denominator set to 0 if you solve that characteristic equation you get the poles there are two poles since this is a second order system and the poles are given by minus omega n times zeta plus or minus root of zeta squared minus 1. Now we'll have different behaviors depending on the value of zeta and look. let's look at the case where zeta is greater than 1. This is the over damped but stable case. You have your transfer function that we saw before if you look at the poles again poles are the, the roots of the characteristic equation s1 s2 
that is equal to minus omega n times zeta plus or minus root of zeta squared minus 1 when zeta is greater than 1 this term here root of zeta squared minus 1 is real and since zeta is always greater than or equal to root of zeta squared minus 1 this is a positive number effectively both roots are distinct and negative so we'll write what the expression for y of s is given that u of s is a step now the denominator of the transfer function can be factorized into two factors because the roots are real and if you do partial fraction expansion and do Laplace inverse this is the expression that you get if you notice this is uh, a summation of two exponentially decaying terms and as t tends to 0 this will end up being 0 this will end up being 0 if you go and draw the graph this is how it will look and if you look at the poles where the poles are located in the complex plane there are two distinct poles one is nearer to the imaginary axis one is further away from the imaginary axis and these are the poles the one that is nearer to the imaginary axis is minus omega n times zeta minus the root of zeta squared minus one and the pole that is further away from the imaginary axis is minus omega n times zeta plus root of zeta squared minus one the second case is the case where zeta equal to one this is the critically damped case again stable so we have as usual our transfer function and we set zeta equal to 1 this ends up being this now this can be factorized as this which is s plus omega n the whole squared if you do partial fraction expansion and invert it this is the expression you get for y of t uh, it is 1 minus e to the power of minus omega n t minus omega n times t times e to the power of minus omega n t notice that um, both roots are at the same location both poles are at the same location minus omega n if we draw this step response this is how it looks for comparison i have also put the over damped case as you notice the critically damped case is much faster than the over damped case Typically, the goal of controller design is to get a critically damped system because it responds the fastest and has no sh overshoot, etc. If you look at where the poles are, both poles of the characteristic uh, of the transfer function or the roots of the characteristic equation are at the same location minus omega n 